Hey there, I'm Bill and welcome to Project Build, where today we're taking these floor standing speakers and restoring them with walnut veneer. My dad got these speakers when I was a kid and they've been in the family since, first with my brother and then passed to me. They're not super high end, but they do sound pretty nice and there's a lot of memories that I have that are associated with these speakers, so I really wanna restore them and give them new life. The vinyl on the speaker box is peeling and bubbling and that's just from exposure to sun and heat over time and it really needs to be removed and replaced with something different. The speaker grills are also really beat up as they were used as the cat scratching post and they look pretty terrible. So I don't really know how restoring this is gonna go as doing something like this is a little new to me, but let's get to work and we'll find out. I started by disassembling the speaker cabinet, first by removing the screws holding the speaker terminal on and then unplugging the wires from the connectors. I'll repeat this on the front of the speaker box, unscrewing, removing, and then disconnecting the tweeter unit. And then again for the two woofers as well as removing the wires. I recommend taking pictures while doing this so you remember how it was wired when you finally get around to reassembling everything months from now. Not that I have any past experience with that. The speaker port is attached inside the box with adhesive. So to remove the port, I heated the adhesive with the heat gun for a minute or so until it began to soften and I could slightly pull the port out. Then I pried the port out with a plastic pry bar while continuing to heat the adhesive holding the port in. There's still some adhesive around the porthole, so I pulled that off while it was warm. To remove the speaker grill sockets, I pried them from the inside out with needle nose pliers and then grabbed them once they were far enough out. To remove the vinyl, I slid a small flexible putty knife under one of the bubbled areas and simply pulled it off. It wasn't adhered well to the MDF, so it came off really easily. The front edge has a lip where the vinyl wraps around and tucks into a small groove, and for the most part, it wouldn't pull out cleanly, so I scored it with a utility knife to remove it. The front of the cabinet is made of particle board, and the vinyl was adhered much better here than it was to the smoothed MDF sides, so I heated the vinyl with a heat gun and then began the slow, painful process of pulling off the vinyl in small pieces. I decided to leave the vinyl on the back of the cabinet as it won't be visible and it will serve as a reminder of what the speakers used to look like. The speakers have this lip on the front edge that the vinyl was wrapped around, but that won't work for veneer as it's not flexible enough to wrap around such a tight bin. So I used a flush trim bit to cut the lip off flat with the front and I'm using an offset base on my router to keep it parallel with the front of the speaker and account for the curved edges on the sides of the speaker. I sanded the speaker box with 120 grit sandpaper to remove the leftover adhesive using my orbital sander on the flat surfaces and sanding the edges and curved surfaces by hand. And this was pretty messy. After sanding, I removed any of the remaining adhesive that I could feel by hand with the scraper. And I filled the gap on the front as well as any gouges in the MDF with joint compound as it spreads and sands well but I actually don't recommend using joint compound. It had a tendency to pull away when gluing the veneer on later and I'd use wood filler if I were to do it again. Once dry, I went over the whole speaker with 150 grit sandpaper until it felt smooth to the touch and just about ready to apply the veneer. But first I painted the exposed back edge black since I won't be putting veneer back there. The first step to veneering was to lay the roll out with the ends held down a day or so ahead of time so it would have time to flatten some and be easier to work with. I laid the veneer on a scrap piece of plywood and then placed the speaker on top about a quarter of an inch in from both edges. Using a new blade on my utility knife, I scored a line about a quarter of an inch from the end and back of the speaker and then went over that line again to cut the veneer out. I want the wood grain of the veneer to flow continuously from one side up over the top and to the other side of the speaker so I labeled the coincident edges using painter's tape. And then I cut out a piece of the veneer for the top of the speaker and a piece for the other side. I also cut panels for the front and bottom of the speaker off camera as the wood grain on those panels is not continuous with the others. I decided to add the bottom panel first as it won't be visible. I applied wood glue to the paper back of the veneer, spreading it out with a brayer roller until the glue covered the entire back in a consistent and even layer. And then I did the same to the bottom of the speaker. I let both surfaces dry until the glue was no longer wet and just a little bit tacky. This allows me to place the veneer on the speaker and realign it as needed. Then I used my iron set to its hottest setting to heat the glue up and fuse the speaker and the veneer together 
spending at least 5 to 10 seconds moving over each area. While the glue was still hot, I ran the edge of a wooden block along the surface to make sure the two faces were pressed together. Gluing the veneer with the iron-on method allowed me to instantly attach the veneer over the curved edge at the front of the speaker, something that would have been very difficult to do using other veneering methods. Once it was cool, I trimmed the veneer using a flush trim bit and then followed that up with a scraper to get what was left behind by the router and then sanded the edges smooth. From there, I added one side panel of the veneer following the same process as the bottom, applying wood glue to both surfaces, letting the glue tack up, ironing the veneer in place, and then trimming it flush. Once I was done with that side panel, I then repeated for the other side. With the sides done, I added the veneer to the top of the speaker, being sure to line up the grain patterns on each side before ironing it in place so that the pattern will appear continuous as it flows over the speaker. Veneering the front was much of the same to apply, but there were some new challenges with trimming it. Because of the curved edges on the sides of the speaker, the router bit could not trim all the way up to the edge. So I trimmed the veneer close by placing a wooden block on the top to provide a backer and scoring the veneer from below along the edge of the side with the utility knife. I used a scraper and sandpaper to finish off what little was left. To cut out the speaker holes, I found the hole locations under the veneer, center punched them a safe distance from the edge of each hole, and then drilled out a 5 8 inch hole for each, which is large enough for me to place my half inch router bit into. I then routed out all the larger openings. When done, I cleaned up the rough edges with some sandpaper. I located the holes for the speaker grill sockets by tapping on the veneer and listening to where it sounded hollow, and then center punched those. And I drilled these with a smaller drill bit than before and pushed the excess down into the hole. These holes were too small for my normal flush trim bit, so I used a smaller laminate trimming bit to cut them out and then a sanding stick to clean up these rough edges. The holes for the speaker screws were impossible to locate from the top, so I took a small awl and punched up from underneath. And then I pushed the wood fibers back down into the hole, punched down with the awl from the top, and then used the back of a drill bit just slightly smaller than the diameter of the hole to finish it. I'm just about ready to sand, but there are a few things that need to be fixed first. Some of the edges didn't get glued down all the way, so I squirted a little bit of water under the veneer and then used the iron to glue it back down. The steam softens the glue and lets it become tacky again. The bearing from the router bit left some grooves in the veneer on the sides and it's too thin to sand these grooves out, so I applied some water to the groove with a cloth and then steamed them with the iron to remove them. The steam swells the wood fibers that have been compressed and returns them close to how they were before being damaged. I sanded the entire speaker by hand with 220 grit sandpaper, first across the grain to raise and snap off any wood whiskers and then with the grain, first with 220 and then with 320. I didn't dare use a power sander as I could just see myself blowing all the way through the veneer with one and I certainly didn't want that. I wiped off all the sanding dust with a tack cloth and applied a coat of wipe-on polyurethane to the entire speaker with a lint-free cloth. After each coat had dried, I sanded the entire speaker with 320 grit sandpaper to smooth out any bubbles or dirt in the finish and wiped off the resulting dust with a tack cloth before applying the next coat. So wiping poly goes on very thin and in total it took six coats before I was happy with it, but oh man do those speakers look good now. While the poly was curing, I turned my attention to the speaker grills and for as good as the speakers look, these grills look equally terrible. On the front, I pried the logo piece off using a plastic pry tool and then looking at the back of the grill, the cloth had been heat pressed and fused to the frame here. So to remove the cloth, I scored it at the outside edge of the fuse section, following the natural groove that existed there and continued around the grill until the entire cloth was free and then used the scraper to remove any of the old cloth remaining. I laid out the new speaker cloth and then placed the speaker grill about four inches from the edges and then cut the cloth around the grill so there was about three to four inches of extra all around. I applied a bead of speaker cloth adhesive to the back of the grill and spread it out with my finger. And after letting the glue tack up for about five minutes, I folded the first long edge over and pressed the cloth down, smoothing the adhesive out with my fingers to hold it in place. It has some adjustability at this point and I actually did a pretty bad job of getting this first edge set up, but it was forgiving enough that it still turned out fine. 
I did the same on the other long edge, except this time pulling the claw slightly taut across the frame before setting the edge. Then I repeated for the short edges, pulling the corners out of the way and then securing the cloth to the adhesive. After about 15 more minutes of drying, I returned to set the corners, pulling the cloth away and then pinching it and pulling it tight across the corner and rubbing it down into the adhesive to set it. I let the adhesive set up for at least an hour before I came back and cut away the excess cloth with a sharp utility knife. And I've linked a video down in the video description that I found helpful for learning how to attach speaker grill cloth. That video covers other types of speaker grills other than the plastic frame like this one is, so check that out if you're interested in that. The grill cloth still has some slight creases in it from where it was folded during shipping, so I removed those with the heat gun set to low. Speaker cloth has some plastic in it and can melt, so be sure to test the level of heat on some scrap. I could just reuse the logo piece that was on the speaker grill before, but I thought it would be fun to make a custom one, so I modeled one up in Fusion 360. I don't own a 3D printer yet, so I had a friend do some test prints using their extrusion printer, and once all the dimensions were set, I had another friend print me two speaker logos using a resin printer. The logo is attached using three pins that go through these holes, but the new cloth covers the holes, so to punch them out, I heated up the end of an awl with a lighter and burned through the speaker fabric. And it turns out that the resin that these were printed from is pretty weak, and I broke off a few of the pins while testing them, so on to plan B. I slit open the cloth between the peg holes, held it open, added some of the speaker cloth adhesive from earlier, and smoothed it out. Since the cloth will now be adhered to the grill behind it, I'll be able to attach the logo directly to the cloth. After this had tacked up for a few minutes, I closed the hole and set the cloth to the adhesive. While that was drying, I sanded the logo pieces lightly so that they'd take paint better and then added a coat of primer. When dry, I added two coats of a metallic machine finish paint that I had left over from an old project. When the paint was dry, I applied some super glue to the edges of the back of the logo on the side with the broken pen and then pressed it into place to set the bond. I also added a few drops of glue to the backs of the pens that I had not broken and I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. The speakers have been curing for over a day so it's time to put them back together. First, I center punched, pre-drilled, and screwed on some felt furniture feet to the bottom of the speaker so that the veneer won't rest directly on the floor. I added back the speaker port and it's a pretty tight fit. To prevent vibrations, I used hot glue to try and seal around the port inside the cabinet, but access and visibility were limited, so it was mostly by feel. And it looks like I did a pretty good job with it, and since it's hot glue, the port will be easy to remove if ever needed. I added back the wires inside the cabinet using the picture I took at the beginning of the project as reference because no, I did not remember exactly how it went together and plugged in the connectors to the back of the lower woofer. I screwed the woofer in place loosely at first and then tightened the screws down all the way in a diagonal pattern. I did the same to the second woofer and then the tweeter assembly. And on the back of the speaker, I put back the speaker terminal plate. The last thing to do was to add the grill peg sockets back to the front and then I could put the speaker grill back on. And I don't know about you guys, but I think I like it better without the grill. To install the speakers, I fed some speaker wire through the back of my TV stand to the speaker location, pulled the wires apart, stripped the insulation off the ends of each wire, and twisted the exposed wire strands together. Eventually, I'll get some banana plugs for these, but for now, I inserted the wires into their respective terminals and tightened them down. Once all the wires were run, I plugged everything into the back of the old receiver that I'm using to power the speakers for now, then I slid it into place, and well, it only seems appropriate to let the speakers bring this one home. And we're done restoring the speakers. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to do a similar restoration, all the tools and materials used are linked down in the video description. If you want to see more projects like this one, then check out my other videos. Until next time, go build yourself and restore some speakers.